everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Tuesday, February the 18th. I am filming this on um, President's Day, the 17th. Wanted to get this out to you for today. Um, most likely everybody is uh, having a relaxing day and um, figured why not get it out today so you can take your time um, reviewing it. We had a nice day up on Friday. Dow Jones up about 126 points. NASDAQ up well, only about three. The S&P up eight. Russell up one. Uh, so really, the Dow Jones really um, took most of the gains uh, pretty much quiet across the board. But yet again, we did lock in another gain. So we really had a, a real big move for the last uh, seven, eight trading days. So where do we go from here? Well, uh, I'm still a cautious bull. Uh, volume to me is still anemic uh, and not really confirming what the move is. But again, price is what pays us. Remember, doesn't mean that you can't go long stocks just because volume isn't there. That's not the case. Uh, what you want to do is obviously stick with the trend. The trend is your friend and look for quality stocks um, uh, on pullbacks. Now, obviously, day trading is a little more difficult because of the fact is we only have six and a half hours a day. And when you get a big explosive move to the upside or a gap up, um, it makes it that much encouraging to start getting into trades because we have already gap up. So the uh, probability is a little bit less um, uh, on your side when you have that big gap up, whereas if you had a flat opening. But anyway, I want to show you a couple of key points. We'll look at some weekly charts as well. Um, we are now uh, getting into an overbought state on the McClellan Oscillator. You can see that right here. And what do I mean by that? Well, that doesn't mean that we're going to look to sell the market. But what it does mean is that we need to be cautious because when we get uh, outside, and we are right now, um, you know, obviously the U.S. markets are closed. We have the Asian markets did okay overnight. And in the European session, uh, which is going to close in about 25 minutes, um, it is green across the board. So we're up about two and a half handles in the E-mini S&P contract. Really not much to tell about anything. But uh, when you do have uh, an overboard state here, um, we could continue to be overboard, as you can see here, but we really want to be cautious. And if you're swing trading, you want to tighten up your stops because of the fact is that we're coming into some overboard readings in our momentum indicators. And this is a, a really reliable indicator. I show this all the time in the McClellan Oscillator. And anything above 60 or below 60, uh, we get to be overbought and or oversold. Uh, and again, we want to watch what happens. If we get outside the Bollinger Bands, usually it's a sign that the markets will start to pull back a little bit, as you can see here, 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 and of course here. Um, same thing with the downside. So just tell me, use caution. I am a cautious bull. We're up extensively. We've actually recouped all of our losses from the 5.5% correction in January. Now we're back to an overbought state. So markets are really whippy and crazy, as you can see. So you want to use caution here, okay? Let's take a look at um, stocks above the 50-day moving average. It is back into the apex of this triangle. Again, uh, when you get into these areas here, now we still have a little bit more room, but when we get it back in this 70 to 80 percentile is really when you want to use caution because there are many times, as you can see here, previous readings that we've had the market sell off again. So not quite there, but again, we're getting, uh, uh, we're getting to that point, okay? Um, I want to take a look at the um, VIX. Now, the VIX to me has a little bit more room to run, and as you can see, the Bollinger Band way up in here, down here, and the 20 here, you can see that it has a lot of room before energy begins to build. So it does have a little bit more room. So I'm still looking for higher prices, but I'm very cautious. Okay, I'm very cautious about that. Uh, remember, Thursday, Friday, we had, uh, we had snow. Um, and then we had a long weekend going into uh, Friday. Uh, things get to be bullish. I mentioned that on a Friday's video. So there's a lot of variables that skew price. Uh, last week to the upside because obviously if the trend if the trend is up why not let it continue uh, but you just got to be cautious here going into next week because we can have a little bit of a pullback at any given moment uh, and, and it is ripe for a pullback okay uh, but again the, not telling us right now uh, that the pullback is in the cards but we can open up tomorrow on Tuesday and the markets be down you know good 10 handles here so just use a little word of caution okay this is what the indicators are for not really to trade off but to give you an edge of what is to come all right. Now we have the um, uh, VIX, as you can see down here. So we still got a little bit more room before we get to be uh, really oversold here in the VIX. All right. Now let's take a look at the. Um, I want to show you this here. This is unusual. This is what I, again I start use. I start to use caution when um, I get um, things that are that are not really uh, um, in sync. When you have the average true range, when the average true range is when stocks are rising. Right, volatility decreases. The average true range starts to diminish. Right, when stocks are when stocks are selling off, we have ATR start to rise. Okay, you can see that here. 
right? When we have the sell-off here, sell-off, rise, and then, of course, when the markets start to rise, we have a decrease in the ATR. Well, we are rising for the last seven, eight trading days, and the ATR is rising, okay? So this is just interesting. It's, it's, it, to me, when I use a lot of this stuff, it's like, okay, I like to put everything in a row. Everything is firing on all cylinders the right way. That's when I'm going to put more. I have a little bit of an edge. I'll put more risk on. You know, when you have things that are not really, you know, things are going, like, for instance, gold, which I'll show you. Gold and silver, the metals are all up while the markets are up. And that's not a, that's not a good sign. It's like telling me that there's, a, you know, it's, it's a safe haven trade going on here. People are starting to, uh, to you know, move their money into some more of a safe haven trade because something is to come down the road and again we don't know that but it's something that we want to continue to watch and monitor okay all right so let's take a look at the fxy and again this is another reason right we have the japanese yen versus the S spx now the japanese yen rose and obviously we had that big sell-off now we have the japanese yen above the 20 above the 50 and just kind of making that higher low from this previous low, to me, that's not a good sign. Now, if the yen starts to explode again, well, guess what? You're going to have now a lower high from this previous high, and market's starting to now start to sell off again. If that's the case, then you're going to start making series of lower lows and lower highs. That's not good. So we want to see the yen start to break down again. Okay, once the yen starts to break down again, it's really all about the yen in the last several months, guys. And when you see this happen, that's when your cue is to say, okay, I need to tighten up my stocks if you're swing trading, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind. Take a look at gold. Right? We had that go, we had that inverted head and shoulders here. We broke out of that area. Now we're breaking out of the 200-day moving average. Gold is actually up $9.20 as I'm recording this. Not a good sign. I mean, you know, why is gold rallying? Now, Obviously, it is oversold, and it was oversold, and that's what I was looking for, that oversold bounce I've been talking about for the last, I don't know, six, seven weeks. And as you can see here, as I label the bull flag, bull flag, now we broke out. And as you can see now, we're starting to get a little parabolic here with these large engulfing candles. We are above the 200, but remember, commodities, especially if you don't trade them as well, they have a tendency to, to trend, and then they dump. So if you are long gold, tighten up your stops. Silver. Great call in the silver, right? We said, hey, silver's basin, great base. We broke out finally on Friday. Now we're above the 200-day moving average. And silver is also up right now as well, uh, about 2%, up 44 cents in silver, all right? And that was playing catch-up to the gold trade. This is what I was looking for. So if you're long silver and took that recommendation, make sure you tighten up your stops, guys, because tomorrow uh, silver could literally just turn around and dump for whatever reason. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I honestly think that... There, is this a precursor of what's to come? I think possibly there might be a deeper downside correction. Now, we don't know that. I'm not going to play that. I'm going to let price tell me that we are now making lower lows and lower highs. In the meantime, I'm a cautious bull, and I'll continue to buy pullbacks on strong stocks. Okay, That's how I'm playing the market at the moment. Real quickly, I want to just show you the S&P and the transportation sector. This is a concern to me. Our leader is not leading the market. The S&P is. That's a follower. Okay, This is a concern. Here is the um, S&P transportation ratio. Transports are, are leading the train. I'm sorry, the S&P is leading the transports. Not a good sign. I don't like to see that. I like to see our leaders lead and our laggards follow. Okay, and that's not the case. But again, this would be more for if you are a longer term guy, a longer term investor, maybe a swing trader for you know several weeks, several days to several weeks and months. That's something that. You, but when you're day trading, you still like to know this stuff because you'll feel more confident putting on more risk if need be. Okay, now, let's get into the chart segment here. Uh, ES, okay, well, as you see now, actually, we're selling off a little bit. We're only up a dollar and a quarter now. Uh, but you can see we're starting to get now overextended here. Not um, uh, a sell signal, but something that you need to know and watch here. Now, at 1836, our spot was what, 18, 18, 15, 1824 would be a first area if it gave you a sell signal to get short the market. It has not given that. So that's, therefore, you do not get short. So right? they always need a trigger. If you without a trigger, you don't just short the market because price is there. Price can continue to rise like it has been. But look what's happening here. Low volume. Lower volume. Now, I like the fact that volume confirms what price is moving. But remember, we don't need the volume in order for us to make money in the market. So um, it's a little bit of a, um, you know, 50-50 here. But I like to see volume confirm this move. And volume did not confirm it. But again, if you're waiting for volume, you would have missed this move. So that's what I'm saying. It's just, just keep it all relevant, guys. All right, here's the hourly chart. 
Now, the hourly chart, we're back up to this 1138-ish area, okay? We're almost retraced pretty much most of this whole move from the low of 1732 here. Um, as you can see, we had that little bit of that double bottom, and then we just kind of exploded up. We've been up every single day pretty much since that low. Now, uh, we're above the 1820 of resistance now support. And now we're coming into that 1838 here, 1840-ish area. 1846 and a quarter is the actual high of the E-mini S&P contract. So we are now, well, we have bullish symmetry, right? We're making higher highs and higher lows. That does not tell us now we're going to short the market, right? We want to wait until we get a rollover, a back test, and then, of course, making the series of lower lows and highs. And then we would look to get short the market. But right now, it's not telling us to do so, other than the fact that we are overextended yet again. Okay, take a look at the uh, spiders. Let's go into it. Spiders, we had that little um, uh, doji, graystone jo doji up in here. And what's happening here? We're now getting elevated. Pri uh, volume is pretty much anemic here for the, for the past five, several days. But we are now at these areas of, ex of, um, of resistance here. These are the previous highs. Um, can it go higher? Absolutely. But I do think the markets seem a little tired here. I think the markets are in need for another bit of a pullback. Now, this pullback is going to be interesting when it does happen, because if it does take out, obviously, this will be key and pivotal right here. That's 173. This will be a, p a pivotal low. If we take out here, then obviously your next area would be the 200-day uh, moving average and, then of course, the October 9th low here. So that's going to be interesting when this pullback does happen, and we'll monitor it and see if we get volume behind it, because as you noticed, we always have the distribution days in red. They're much higher than when they are on the way up. Okay, not a good sign. But... We'll take it one step at a time here. Here is our little bit of that ratio chart I'm showing you. So this is the concern, right? Why is gold breaking out and following S&P? And bonds really haven't sold off, right? They're kind of holding in there. So interesting. Uh, it's something that I'm going to continue to watch. I like this little chart here. Gives me a little bit more of what the internals of kind of the breadth of the market, what the markets are doing. Here's the S&P 500 weekly holding in nicely here. Again, nothing wrong with the longer term picture. We're making higher highs and higher lows, and we're holding true to this uptrend line. So to me, I still like the market in the longer term. I would love to get a pullback as much as any other uh, hedge fund guy or a money manager or fund manager so they can start buying into stocks. Now, look at the transports. Here is what's really scary. This volume has been literally, from this, from this low, has been literally just going down every single day. And we're not, we just barely got above the 20-day the moving average. So... Can it play catch-up? It sure can. I mean, you can see back here what happened here. Uh, we played catch-up right up in this area here, and then we started making a series of higher highs and higher lows, and then sure enough, here we are. Um, so it can happen, but again, uh, that's why I call, the, I call this uh, rally up suspect. IWM, another one of our leaders, really just back-testing now a bearish rising wedge. If you can see this, if you open this chart, bring this chart in, you'll see we got a bearish rising wedge, and now we're just back-testing it which is a big concern of mine because of the fact it is a leader and a good gauge of risk as we go into resistance here at the 50 and then have this bearish rise and wedge break. This is now on a sell signal, guys. It needs to get back into the wedge and start to break out higher in order for this to alleviate the selling, uh, the sell signal. So another concern, this is something I'll be watching moving for going forward, the IWMs. Q's uh, semiconductors on fire. Uh, that is a good sign. That's a very good sign. One of our key um, uh, sectors are on fire, and that's what we want. We want to see technology run, and we want to see banks and financials, which are not really participating in this move up. Diamonds, lastly, as you can see here, uh, diamonds really not participating. It is a, a, a follower, one of the followers that we, uh, that we look for, so it's okay that it's lagging to um, the other, um, other indices. However, when you have the Russell lagging, then you have the diamonds, and then you have really the transports lagging, and all you have is the S&P that's moving higher. That's not a real good sign that, that this, um, to me, this, this move higher would be suspect. But again, I'm not looking to short. I'm still looking to buy, uh, buy pullbacks here until the trend changes. Okay, GLD. If you are long the gold, like we talked about on this break here, tighten up your stops. You're coming into the 200-day moving average, okay? Look at the volume. Definitely confirm this move. No question about it. Um, XOP, the oil and gas, as you can see here now. Um, got, a, got a good couple of emails, right? Mark, how do you 
how do you know when to look for this? Well, you look at the ETF, right? We have a, a sideways consolidation, right? Just kind of stepping in there, one, two, three, and we, we held this area. Once it held that double bottom, just dial it down. Go into Yahoo Finance, go into type in XOP, then type, type in the holdings. Gives you the top 10 holdings. Look for the best stock, and you can start looking to play that, that ETF within that sector. And um, if you did do that, you'd... you'd be making some money in oil and gas right now. Um, I like to see this thing move up a little higher, pull back, give us a pull back to the 50, make that higher low from this previous low. That just kind of confirms the move, right? Like right now, all of this is just kind of neandering in this channel. Not that you can't make money. Uh, if you're if you're a swing trader, you're not going to trade this. But if you're a scalper, sure, why not? Um, you know, you can definitely play this. I like to see it come in one more time, hold this area true. And then make that higher low easy to manage. You'll know where your stops are, and then obviously start to break out and move higher. Look at the uh, volume profiles. We got a nice big thin zone here. Plenty of room to run. Target is nice on this XOP. XLE it as well is on a sell signal, right? Broke this bearish rising wedge I showed you many times. But again, I do like this sector. I'm, I'm longer term bullish on the uh, energy sector and the um, uh, oil services. So I like to see. Right now, um, it get into this uh, up, upward channel, this rising wedge, if you will, and alleviate this downside pressure and then start to break out higher, okay? Right now, um, you can play this short on the next lower high. Um, if this thing were to reverse and take out this 84.88, you can literally take this as a short trade, at least to the 200. That would be your target, your next target on here. So XLE, I do like longer term, but right now, it is on a sell signal. And USO, uh, oil actually had a big spike up too today as the market's closed here in the U.S., but we do have a nice consolidation above the 200. I would not be in it now. Um, we did have another nice call in USO. Uh, so I'd wait for a pullback back into this zone area here, uh, into the 20 to 50. And if that can hold, base for a couple of days. Now, if you notice what happens, right? If you look for the patterns in in, uh, in crude or via the USO, so what happens? It's, it bases and then breaks out or breaks down, right? Look at this base, broke out. Look at this base, broke out, and then failed, right? Look at this base here, broke out, right? Let's go back, right? We had, we had a nice big movement here. We based, we based, we based, and this broke down. We based up top, created the head, we broke down. We based here for several months, and then we broke back up to create that head. Look at here. We based into a uh, symmetrical triangle and broke out. So, if you miss a move, wait for a base and then play the breakout, right? And that's exactly what I do in USO and oil because it holds true to that. And, um, and same thing with gold and silver too, by the way, guys. You can do that as well. Just look for previous patterns. Look for repetitive patterns in your chart and then look for that and play that next uh, pattern. And it usually happens because most traders look for these patterns in, uh, in crude oil and the uh, commodity sector. Okay, um, ITB, home construction. As you can see here, really nice symmetrical triangle breakout. Downtrend channel broke out. What can you say? Quite bullish here, guys. Um, I'm not going to look to buy this here now, um, especially when uh, seasonality, home builders, and home construction come in out of favor a little bit uh, up until the spring. So we've got a couple months of uh, the IBT and home construction, guys. But I'm going to show that to you anyway. You can see the XHB play catch up here when it was kind of lagging home construction. But now it's starting to move out here. So what I would be doing, if you are a swing trader, I'd be looking for weakness in the home builders to be building a position going into the spring. Okay, uh, building a position on weak stocks. Identify the amount of money you want to risk, and then divide that into your um, shares, and that's how you're going to be looked to trade that. Same thing with the PHM, Pulte Homes, another one of my favorite. Uh, the three are Lennar, Pulte Homes, and KBH, and I like the KBH because this really hasn't gone anywhere. Once this home building sector starts to move again to the upside, you're going to see a big move in, in this sector, and as well as the KBH. Okay, um, XLF here. This is again another little bit of a concern. We have um, the XLF really not moving. We did move up higher with with uh, with the um, with the market, which is nice. But a lot of some of the stocks didn't move too well. Like look at Citibank. Citibank didn't go anywhere on this move. Yeah, it came off the high, but kind of stuck below that 50. We want to get above the 50. I think uh, Citibank is ready to explode to the upside again. But again, we need the whole. We need that whole sector and we need the dynamic of the market to come together as one and then really start to blast off. Otherwise, these stocks will falter as well. JP Morgan here, a little stronger than the other two. As you can see, look at Goldman. See, so some of these key bank stocks did not move um, with 
the XLF. So that's a concern to me, and that's that's why I, I like to see. I'd rather see movement in it. Now Apple here doing really well here. It broke off here, it broke out of this consolidation area. Same thing with Apple. Once it consolidates, it'll break down or break out. If you're playing Apple here, obviously I wouldn't be looking to. Um, uh, add a new position here. Let's wait for the next higher low and then obviously easy to manage from here. Okay. All right, guys, this week is going to be really interesting. We've been up now about, about I guess, seven, eight days um, and we had low volume last week due to the snowstorm. Let's see what happens if uh, we see big money starting to take profits here because if, if so, uh, be looking for uh, lower prices to come here. Okay. A little long video, but it's a uh, day off. So I wanted to get the, um, get some key um, charts across uh, and prepare you for the week. Have a great day. Hope you're enjoying your day off, and uh, we shall see you on Wednesday. Take care.